So here you are, you've gone on YouTube to click on some video to learn about the unforgivable sin, a sin that God says he will never forgive. But I think that this is something that we are irrationally afraid of as Christians that we don't need to be. And I don't want this video to take fear out of our hearts because that's not what Jesus' message did here. In fact, it put fear into the hearts of man. But I don't want us to be scared of something that we shouldn't. For example, when we go swim in the ocean, at least someone like me that doesn't live near an ocean, you get a little antsy thinking, oh, there might be sharks swimming around me in the water. You watch the movie Jaws and you're scared of something that you really don't need to be scared of. However, if there's a feeding spree of sharks in the middle of the ocean and you take a boat out there and jump in the middle of it, it probably is something that then you should have fear of. So if we have a proper understanding of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, then we know how to fear the Lord better. And remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So just like anything that we talk about in Scripture or in the Bible, it's best to just go actually read that part of Scripture and then talk about it. So let's hop into Mark chapter 3. Jesus also talks about this in the book of Matthew, but they're pretty similar scriptures, Matthew 12, if you want to look at either one. One time Jesus entered a house, and the crowds began to gather again. So he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When his family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. But the teachers of the religious law who arrived from Jerusalem said, He's possessed by Satan, the prince of demons. That's where he gets his power to cast out demons. Jesus called them over and responded with an illustration. How can Satan cast out Satan? He asked, A kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. Similarly, a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is driving out and fighting against himself, how can he stand? He would never survive. Let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. I tell you the truth, all sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. He told them this because they were saying he's possessed by an evil spirit. So here's the context. Jesus has just gone out and he's cast out a boy that was possessed by a demon. And then the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time, come to him and say that he's possessed by, here in this translation it says, by Satan and more literal translations such, such as the ESV, the NET, and the NIV would say Beelzebub. And essentially... What they're doing here is they're accrediting the work of God to the work of the devil. And this, in my opinion, is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes we think the unforgivable sin would be something much worse in our own eyes. For example, murder, some sexual sin, or even suicide. But here in Scripture, we see that in context of what's happening here, is that the Pharisees are accrediting the works of God to Satan. If you're watching this video and you're a Christian and you've worried that you've done this, I would tell you that you haven't because Jesus says that it's an unforgivable sin. And furthermore, if you're watching this video and you're not a Christian and you feel like you've done this, but God is calling you to his grace, then I would again tell you that, that you haven't because God tells us that while we were still enemies of the cross, he loved us first. And if God's calling you to be saved, then I would implore you, I would encourage you to accept his salvation on your life. This is happening in a very specific point in history. They've received all of the law and the prophets. Now the Messiah is physically standing in front of them, and yet they're accrediting his works to Satan. Some more conservative theologians that I was researching for this video actually think that this time period, you could only cause blasphemy against the Holy Spirit when they were face to face with Jesus and accrediting it to God. And this is a very strong warning that Jesus is sending out and something that we shouldn't take lightly. But just as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I don't want us as modern day believers to be walking in fear that we might mess up in a way that would cause God to never forgive us. 
because by and large, that's just not a true statement. If you want to learn a deeper dive into this topic, then the top link of the description is a great video by Mike Winger, who goes a lot more in depth onto this than I will in this short video. But if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please leave a like, it really does help the channel. And I'll see you back here later as we continue to read through scripture together.